First, a very quick um, review of everything we have seen so far. NSF transition probabilities. Basically, if you want to see uh, what's the probability of going from a state I to J in N steps, uh, you look at rho I column J of P to the power of N. And then we talked about a steady state probabilities. Uh, there we would uh, first make sure that this is an ergodic state, ergodic chain. Then uh, we would uh, and form this system of equations. Um, so this is, these are a bunch of equations itself here. Plus this last equation, it will be a, a step system of equation. And from there we find the steady state probabilities, which means the fraction of time that a system is in a certain state uh, after it st becomes a stable or uh, after it settles down or uh, probability of going probability of being in a certain state many many steps from now okay another way of finding this pi is, is to just put it in your calculator and then increase uh, right p to the power of n then n is really large like 100 or something depending on the matrix and then you will see that you get the same numbers on the first column when these numbers are all the same you know that you have reached the steady state <clears throat> and then we talked about comparing two options. Uh, for that, we would go through these five steps. One, step one, what are the options? A step two, you would assign a priority, a transition priority matrix to each basically option, and then find the pies for that transition priority matrix. And then um, you would calculate the expected value for each option to see which one. Uh, is better. Larger value for profit, lower value for uh, cost. And then we talked about mean first passage times, the expected number of steps uh, before going uh, from one state to another. <clears throat> and we showed that the formula, formula is one over pi i, if you're talking about going back to a state, but going back to itself, or one plus summation of PIK, uh, K to J. So if this is IJ, IJ, and in between, it first goes to K, then goes from K to J. So we talked about all of it. So I'm gonna give you a little review of inverse of a matrix because we're gonna use that in absorbing chains. <clears throat> Any N by N matrix A whose determinant is non-zero has an inverse um, such that that matrix multiplied by its inverse uh, is the identity matrix. So what is I? I is basically is a matrix whose elements are all zero except the diagonal one. One, zero, 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 one, zero, zero. 0, 0, 1, 0, and this keeps going. So only the, except these guys, all of the rest are 0. So we call this one, and you can swap those, uh, we call that the inverse of A, inverse of A. And the formula for that, is uh, one over determinant of A times adjoint of A. Now let's see how we calculate those. For two by two, it's easy. For two by two, for example, your matrix is A, B, C, D. Its determinant is A, D, A, D minus B, C. A, D minus B, C, one over that. Uh, one, so this is the determinant, and from the formula we had in the previous slide, you write one over determinant of A times adjoint of A. What is adjoint of A? You swap these two, A and D, you see that I swap them, and you add a negative to these two. So you don't swap them, you just add a negative value, negative sign to that. 
All right. What is an example of that? 